Good morning. I'm Dr. Julia Ogden. How can I help you today? This is Prescott. Hello, doctor. Oh. I hurt my arm. Oh, let me take a look. Uh. It appears you may have fractured your distal radius. That's your wrist. It hurts terribly. Here, take this. Laudanum. It will help with the pain. How did this happen? I fell. Anything you say will be held in the strictest confidence. You can trust me. You said he would be jailed and I would be free. Your husband did this. I thought that he was convicted for larceny. He was released. Alderman Prescott is a changed man, haven't you heard? He hasn't changed one bit. Hey, Where is my wife? There. Abigail. Uh, uh, please, forgive me, dear husband. It's just my arm. If you weren't so damned clumsy. Have you no compassion? Your wife has a broken wrist. Then she should be in a proper hospital under the care of a legitimate doctor. I am a legitimate doctor. Right. Abigail, come. Just let me finish splinting her and you can take her to the hospital to get a plaster cast. Please, Adrian, it hurts so... Very well, but hurry up. You don't have to live like this. I don't know how to live any other way. Let me help you. Are you done yet? This will keep your wrist immobile until you can get a proper cast. Come on then. Greenleaf Cafe, 2 p.m. I'm not sure I understand all the scuttlebutt. But she's the mayor's wife attending a public function. And? And she was hapless. Well, it's a wonder people could even control themselves. I hesitate to disrupt such riveting debate, but there's been a death at the Stanford Berkshire Gallery. George? Oh. I'm Sydney Finch. I made the telephone call. Um, Detective Murdoch, Constable Crabtree. I found him when I arrived to help hang his new exhibit. Stanford Berkshire was many things, but he did not deserve this. Is anything missing, Miss Finch? The artwork itself appears untouched, apart from the... Um... Yes, of course. Um, I may have more questions if you could wait outside. Gladly. Cause of death seems obvious. Sir, have a look at this. The safe. Sturdy looking one at that. Seems someone was trying to break into it. What do you suppose is in there? Motive for murder would be my guess. So perhaps I should get in touch with Harry. Harry? Harry Houdini, sir. I've seen him open a safe just like this. Mind you, he was inside of it at the time. I believe he's in California these days. Incredible, sir. You'll have to teach me this technique. Considering a career change? Is it money? Or jewels? Art, it would appear. Good gracious. She is not wearing her hat. Or anything else, for that matter. Why would a respected art collector have such a stash of indecent images? I wonder if Mr. Blue can shed further insight. No telephone number or address. 8 a.m., Kamasaki Shunga, the Shroud of Secrets. Shunga, I just saw something. The Shunga of Hokuzai. Shunga is a form of Japanese erotic art. You asked me to locate a family member? It's my grandfather, my... It's my Pardon me, sir. My grandfather, is he, uh, Is he deceased? I'm afraid so. Please, have a seat. I'm Detective Murdoch, and you are? Gregory Berkshire. What happened? I'm afraid your grandfather's been murdered. 
What is all this? Uh, these are artworks that we recovered from your grandfather's safe. Why would my grandfather have illicit materials in his possession? Isn't, isn't that sort of thing illegal? It certainly is. No, I, if it ever becomes public knowledge that he collected pornography, it, it would destroy everything he ever worked for. We're not here to expose your grandfather's secrets. I'm simply looking for insight into his whereabouts this morning prior to his arrival here. I know he left the family estate early to do some banking, but other than that, I... What appears there was a lot about my grandfather that I didn't know. William, why is an Alderman Prescott behind bars? It's nice to see you too, Julia. Uh, sorry, William. Uh, wasn't he found guilty of extorting money from the Starbright Club? He was. I believe he received a very light sentence. Oh, as men in high places often do. Julia, what's this about? Abigail Prescott came into the clinic today. I believe her husband broke her wrist. Are you sure? Quite. The Crown seems to be convinced that he has dedicated himself to charity since his release. But he's still abusing his wife. Honestly, I'm surprised she hasn't filed for a divorce yet. Well, I'm not. A society that castigates women for going hatless is even less tolerant of women who leave their husbands. And what would you like me to do about this? You could arrest him for abusing her. I could, but she would need to agree to press charges. And even then, there's no guarantee that anything would come of it. And she risks angering an already violent spouse. Exactly. Well, I'm meeting her for tea. Perhaps I can convince her to stand up for herself. You be careful, Julia. Let me know how it goes. Good gracious. What's wrong, George? Oh, doctor, I'm uh, uh, cataloging confiscated material, lewd confiscated material. Venus in the mirror. <laughs> Anatomical accuracy is quite remarkable. Yes, well, let me tell you, Doctor, this one, tip of the iceberg. Well, enjoy. George, are these all pictures of naked ladies? Some are naked ladies, some are naked men. Some are naked ladies and naked men doing naked things. No. Yes. Erotic scene with three women and one man by Henry Fuseli. You should see prostitution and madness dominating the world by fellatio and rops. Well, can I? The trash that rich men hoard in safes. Bloody degenerates. So what's going to become of all these materials? Well, I've informed the chief constable. He's sending us a morality officer. How goes the cataloging, George? Sir, it is eye-opening. No doubt. Henry? Uh, I wasn't. <clears throat> What did you learn from uh, Stanford Berkshire's banker? Well, I found out that Mr. Berkshire withdrew $300 this morning, sir. Did he now? I paid Mr. Berkshire's attorney a visit. Apparently, he had a meeting set with him for tomorrow in which he wished to discuss matters of family honor. Family honor and a withdrawal of $300. Perhaps Mr. Blue was blackmailing Berkshire. Certainly is a person of interest. And perhaps this... The Shroud of Secrets is at the crux of this case. Well, sir, the calling card also mentioned Shunga, which is... I mean, what this woman and this octopus are trying to accomplish, I have no idea. Let me see that. That's enough. Higgins, about your business. Crabtree, you're dismissed. We'll see to it. She's worked. Dr. Ogden, are you here to escort me to the reformatory? Reformatory? Absolutely not. When I didn't see you at the tea house, I came straight away. What's going on? My husband's sending me for treatment. For your wrist fracture? For my delusional hysteria. Uh, look, you are neither delusional nor hysterical. My husband brought me before a judge. He said the Mercer helps incorrigible women improve their mental hygiene. I am well acquainted with the Andrew Mercer Reformatory, and you most certainly do not belong there. It's got to be better than living with him. Abigail, do you trust me? Will you come with me?
driver. Head west along Queen Street and then further west along Lakeshore. I'll give you more specific directions later. Why didn't you tell him where we were going? Your husband has a great deal of power and influence. He could track us down. No one knows we're leaving Toronto. I telephoned my husband from a call box, but I assure you, he wouldn't tell a soul. So where are we going? I'll find a hotel at a railway station, and we'll stay overnight. In the morning, I'll purchase two tickets to Chatham. Why Chatham? I have a friend there, Dr. Rebecca James. She'll be more than willing to help you. Officer Bishop, thank you for coming in. My pleasure, Detective Murdoch. What are we looking at here? It appears you're in possession of a cache of lewd documents. Oh, we also found this in the deceased's pocket. Does that name ring any bells? Yes, I have heard rumors of this Mr. Blue, a notorious purveyor of pornography. I've yet to track down his true identity, though. Any idea where we might begin to look for him? There is a bookshop on Queen Street where degenerates gather and trade erotic materials. Finley's first editions have tried to infiltrate, but to no avail. Infiltrating the bookstore seems to be our best chance at finding this Mr. Blue. I propose we send someone in undercover posing as a buyer of erotic art. And who would that someone be? One person immediately jumps to mind. Ah. Ah. <laughs> you mustn't worry, Abigail. I've covered our tracks. We're not even registered under our true names. Thank you, Doctor. I just kept thinking he would change. It's hard to leave a marriage. But men like that do not change. <laughs> it took me a broken wrist to realize that. I won't be long. I'll buy the train tickets and I'll be right back. And then we're off to Chatham. That's right. I can't believe I'll finally be free. <laughs> uh, the medication must be wearing off. There's a single dose of laudanum on the nightstand. Take it and get some rest. I'll be back before you know it. Thank you, Julia. Hello. Good morning. Is there anything I can help you with? I do hope so. I've heard this establishment caters to uncommon interests. Hmm. Now, I'm interested in artworks of a specific genre. I lean toward the taboo. Hmm. I may be able to accommodate you, but I warn you. Uncommon tastes command uncommonly high prices. Ah. <laughs> well, sir. Money is no object. Mm. Come with me. Ah. <laughs> Need a lift, ma'am? Oh, no, thank you. I'm only going a short distance. Maybe you could help me find my way. Is there a doctor in this town? Oh, actually, I am a doctor, but... Praise Jesus. My dear Bianca is terribly ill. I'm so sorry. I, I would like to help you, but I... I don't have much time. Please, even five minutes of your time. Please. Well, I suppose I have five minutes. Bless you. Climb it. Bianca is just up the road. that be? Salome by Oscar Wilde. Ah. Illustrated by the great Aubrey Beardsley. Are you familiar with him? Not as well as I'd like to be. <clears throat> His line work. It's truly exquisite. You know, this book destroyed Beardsley after collaborating with Wilde. Only pornographers would employ him. And on his deathbed, 
Beardsley begged his publisher to destroy all obscene drawings that he had produced. What a damn shame that would have been. Mm. Yes. And you, are you in search of anything in particular? <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking for, but I'll know it when I see it. Mm -hmm. I hear a Mr. Blue offers the finest selection. Is he here? Mr. Blue is extraordinarily secretive. Huh. I don't blame him. Toronto is rotten with petty proofs and self-righteous snitches, and don't get me started on the stuffed shirts at the police department. Oh, they're the absolute worst. <laughs> Actually, I've taken an interest in Shunga of late. Shunga? Shunga. Ah. He's an absolute... Greetings, all. Thing. I have a thrilling offering up for purchase today. The Shroud of Secrets, a volume of Shunga Woodlock prints by Kamasaki Ono. Looks like it's your lucky day. Name your price and I'll take it. You have sublime taste, sir. It's a beautiful volume. Now, regarding the terms of our deal. No, here's the deal. I know that Mr. Blue is about to sell this book to a man who ended up dead. Stanford Berkshire wanted to buy the Shroud of Secrets. So you admit you knew the dead man? Yes, I was interviewed by one of your detectives already. But Stanford was a dear friend of mine. I assure you I did not kill him. We'll see about that. In the meantime, I'm arresting you for possession of obscenity. Mr. Blue, come with me. Uh, ma'am, you can't go in there. This is a crime scene. Abigail! Uh, I, I warned you, ma'am. That is my friend, Abigail Prescott. Yeah, there's no Abigail Prescott on the hotel registry. Well, that's her name. I'm her doctor, Julia Ogden. We stayed in the hotel last night. I need to examine her. You're a doctor. Well, we found an empty vial of laudanum. It appears your patient overdosed. Overdosed? That... that's impossible. I suggest you review your pharmacopoeia. Doctor. She's dead. Constable, escort. Dr. Ogden to the station house? You need to answer some questions. Sydney Finch reported the murder of Stanford Berkshire. She was waiting at the gallery when we arrived. Seemed quite bereft. Well, let's talk to her. Detective Murdoch? Yes, Henry. The Port Credit Constabulary called. Your wife has been arrested. What? Go. I'll deal with Finch. I assure you, I am not Mr. Blue. I've never even met Mr. Blue. Stanford Berkshire had an appointment to meet Mr. Blue to purchase the very item that you came waltzing in the bookstore trying to sell. I don't understand. Mr. Berkshire wasn't even an enthusiast. On the contrary. Berkshire had a safe chock full of enthusiasm. You killed him to try to get to it. No, I've not a violent bone in my body. I am a patron of the arts. You were all set to sell Berkshire the Shroud of Secrets. You fought over the price, killed him, and then tried to abscond with the rest of the goods that he had stashed in his safe. Wrong on all accounts. I received a message from Mr. Blue offering me the book at a very attractive price. I saw the chance to make a profit. So I left the money at a predetermined spot and came back half an hour later to find Kamasaki's masterpiece waiting. I don't buy all this cloak and dagger stuff, Miss Finch. You had motive, you had opportunity, and you had in your possession physical evidence connecting you to the deceased. I'm arresting you for the murder of Stamford Berkshire. Here in Board Credit, we have our own proper protocols none of which involve allowing outside investigators access to our files or our prisoners. I haven't been entirely transparent about my motives. The prisoner in question is my wife. Your wife was the deceased physician? Why were they in poor credit? That's a matter between doctor and patient. And this doctor was treating her patient with laudanum. She'd suffered a broken wrist. Julia is a superb physician. Uh, administering ten times the normal dosage doesn't seem the work of a superb physician. Ten times? That's our coroner's estimate. How can that be? Ask your wife. Come with me. We 
me in. You've got 15 minutes. I don't know how this happened. Clearly, you should not have ventured out hatless. <laughs> it's all right. We'll sort this out together. Sir, have a look. It's the inventory list requested from Station L3. Good work, Crabtree. What are you looking for? Guidance. I see no rhyme nor reason as to what the morality police consider obscene. Oh. You spoke to that morality cop, didn't you? Uh, yes, for Constable Bishop. Did he say what happened to the contraband once it was surrendered to his department? Yes, sir. He said they destroyed it. Chucked on the bonfire, apparently. Like bloody hell it is. Sir. Look. This is the list that I compiled of materials taken from Berkshire's safe. And this is the list that Station House 3 catalogued from a raid a few weeks prior. Notice anything? The same items are on both lists. Some of which are one-of-a-kind originals. The exact same items were confiscated twice, even though Bishop said he destroyed all of it. Then I suppose he's lying. Well, Glugs, bring him in. Good work. Ten times the dosage? Is it possible you miscalculated? Absolutely not. I would never make such an egregious error. Uh, there must be something else. Could foul play have been involved? I just don't see how. We were so vigilant in covering our tracks. William, all, all she wanted was to be free. Uh, and I failed her. This is not your fault. Inspector Bracken Reed. Officer Bishop. I know who you are. Have a seat. See, you've been washing the scum off the streets of our fair city. Crack and fine work, Inspector. Tell me, what do you do with all this stuff once you've whisked it away? I burn it. Unlike a phoenix, it miraculously rises again. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Do you remember this one? An original painting. The uh, Passionate Milkmaiden by Maud Bernice Proulx. Ah, uh, yes, I recall that one. Although it was not the milk the maiden was passionate about. <laughs> Leave you me. <laughs> so, you burned it. That is what I do, yes. <clears throat> What's this then? <clears throat> Perhaps Maud Bernice Proulx painted a series of passionate milkmaidens. Or perhaps you don't burn the erotica, but resell it at profit, Mr. Blue. Sir, I'm an officer of the law. Oh, drop the act. I know who you are. The proof's all over the table. <laughs> Inspector Brackenreed, have you looked at these images? I mean, really looked at them. For hours, who do you think did the inventory? So then you must know. What? that this is art, that it's beautiful. Take a look at this. Now consider the milkmaiden. Every freckle in her bosom, every crease in her dress, tenderly rendered by the hands of a virtuoso, should the work of Maud Bernice Proulx be kept away from the eyes of those who would cherish it? It's not for you to judge, Constable. Who gets to decide what full-grown adults are allowed to see? Surely burning art is a far greater crime than selling it. I know you agree with me. Be that as it may, my opinions are as irrelevant as yours. With all due respect, sir, our opinions are not irrelevant. Art matters, and it is our God-given right to be able to appreciate it. This conversation is over. I'm arresting you for the murder of Stamford Berkshire. Constable, cuff this man. What? Hold on now. Hold on. I, I sold to Berkshire, yes, but I didn't kill him. I, I, I never even met the man. Look, he would leave the money in a crawl space behind the gallery. I would collect it and then leave the art behind. But that morning, the money wasn't there. So I sold the Shroud of Secrets to Sidney Finch instead. You have to believe me. After being caught selling stolen evidence on the black market, I most definitely do not. <sighs> If my wife bears 
any responsibility in Abigail Prescott's death. It is purely by accident. Well, accidents that result in death have consequences, Detective. And the charge would be what? The Crown decides the charges. Criminal negligence, at the very least. Dr. Ogden is no criminal. That's for the court to decide. Regardless, I would like to take my wife home. She will, of course, appear in court at the appropriate time to face the charges, but I see no need to keep her here locked in a cell on a negligence charge. What is he doing here? Alderman Prescott, my condolences. Condolences? Oh, that is rich. His wife murders mine, and he has the nerve to offer condolences. Murder? That's absurd. Do you have any evidence to support that accusation? The evidence is overwhelming. Julia Ogden kidnapped Abigail, dragged her to a grimy hotel, and plied her with drugs. And when Abigail protested, Julia Ogden killed her with an overdose. I have spoken with the Crown. Your wife will be charged with first-degree murder. Think, Julia. I haven't stopped thinking since I saw her dead body in that hotel room. I just can't conceive how this could have happened. Is it possible that Mrs. Prescott committed suicide? I don't see how. I left her with a single vial of laudanum. When I went to get the tickets, that's not enough to cause harm. And you're certain it was the correct dosage? Yes, of course. Any news? Regrettably, no. Scoured the police files, but I found nothing to help our case. I'll double check them. And together we'll triple check them. Don't lose hope, Julia. Did anyone know you were staying at the hotel with Abigail? Not a soul. We even registered under false names. <sighs> Perhaps I did make a mistake. What if I grabbed the wrong dilution from the clinic? What if I did kill her? Worst case, it would be considered an accident, correct? In the absence of any alternate explanation of how this happened, we will have to appeal to the hearts and minds of the jury. The Crown will try to paint you as a radical zealot, an unhinged kidnapper. But as your attorney, I will provide them with the true measure of Dr. Julia Ogden, a brilliant hero who would risk anything to rescue a woman from a life of abuse. You were only trying to help her. The jury will see that. Uh. Ah, Inspector Brackenridge? What's this about? Do you need me to testify at my grandfather's murder trial? We might, but I've brought you in on another matter. Have a seat. Your grandfather was in the process of purchasing this when he was murdered. I thought it only right that you should have it. Is this banned art? Yes, but it shouldn't be. Your grandfather was a man of culture, ahead of his time. He wasn't a criminal. Shroud of Secrets. You read Japanese? No, 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 I don't. I, um... What are you insinuating? The erotica in the safe was yours, wasn't it? Sir, I am the heir to the Berkshire fortune. Why would I jeopardize the family name by collecting pornography? Oh, I agree. It was a very stupid move on your part. And when Grandpa discovered your collection, he threatened to write you out of the will. And that's why he made an appointment to see his lawyer to discuss family honor. And that's why you gave his sculling. That is nonsense, and I deeply resent the accusation. Oh, well, you're going to hate this. Gregory Berkshire, I'm arresting you for the murder of Stamford Berkshire. Constable! Did you notice anything unusual about the two women during their stay at your hotel? Nothing especially. Except they used fake names. And the one lady did all of the talking. Which lady? That one there. The killer. My lord, I object to this speculation. My client has not been found guilty. Sustained. The jury will ignore this accusation. Well, after we received the call at the station, we arrived on the scene to find the victim deceased. 
Shortly after, the defendant appeared. And what was your initial impression of Dr. Ogden? At the time, she appeared somewhat bedraggled, and she seemed confused and agitated. And what were the coroner's findings? The coroner's report described a massive amount of laudanum in the victim's body. Now, can you read aloud, please, for the jury? This section of the report here. <clears throat> it is this coroner's opinion that the administration of this massive overdose of laudanum was either an act of gross negligence or a deliberate attempt to harm the victim. And is it true you were unable to find a single other suspect in the death of Mrs. Prescott? That is true. In fact, by the defendant's own admission, no one else knew where they were, correct? Correct. Julia Ogden claims she was your wife's physician. I'm sure Julia Ogden would claim she was the Queen of England if that lie somehow served her purposes. She has been a thorn in my family's side, desperate to drag my dear Abigail from her loving marriage and into a life of extreme feminist beliefs. Objection, Your Honor. The witness cannot claim knowledge to the inner workings of my client's mind. It is as obvious as the nose on my face that Julia Ogden is a zealot, intent on destroying the very foundations upon which our society is built. Sustained. Alderman Prescott, I'll ask you to refrain from further outbursts. Yes, Your Honor. But how did you know Gregory Berkson was the murderer? Even you couldn't make this up, Crabtree. He claimed to have no knowledge of the world of erotica, but tipped his hand when he identified the Shroud of Secrets. He was stealing money out of his grandfather's account to finance his hobby. Then, when Grandpa threatened to cut him off, he killed him and tried to frame Mr. Blue, who turned out to be our very own officer bishop. Come along. Speak of the devil. Oh, come on, I'm not that bad. That's debatable, but at least you're not a murderer. Uncuff him, Higgins. Thanks. It's the nicest thing anyone said to me in a long time. So, I'm free to go. Yes, you can go. Oh, and uh, find yourself a new job. You're fired. Fired? But I... Not another word. You're lucky I don't rearrest you. Strangely, I don't feel very lucky in this moment. Oh, Bishop, for what it's worth, you were right. I agree with you. I knew it. Doesn't let me keep my job, though, does it? I'm afraid not, son. What did you agree on, sir? Mind your beeswax bug looks. You have heard from Alderman Prescott about the alleged character of Dr. Julia Ogden. I am here to tell you that his description is the slanderous fabrication of a man who seeks to conceal his own culpability. Dr. Ogden is no zealot. Her actions are driven by prudence, intellect, and compassion. Throughout her career, she has fought to better the lives of women, especially women like Abigail, who was powerless against her abusive husband. My lord, I must object. Alderman Prescott is not on trial here, and there's been no proof that he's ever been anything but a loving husband and a diligent provider. Sustained. Very well. I will let Dr. Ogden's brilliance and eloquence dispute the Alderman's claims of her. I call Dr. Julia Ogden to the stand. Dr. Ogden, please recount for the jury the history of your relationship with Abigail Prescott. A few months ago, Mrs. Prescott came into my care covered in bruises which were clearly the result of a brutal assault. And who was her assailant? She told me it was her husband, Alderman Prescott, who was later in prison for other misdeeds. My lord, again, I object. My lord, as you and my learned friend are aware, the Alderman's sentencing and conviction are a matter of public record. And it is not relevant here. Continue your testimony, Dr. Ogden. When the Alderman was released from his sentence, Mrs. Prescott returned to the clinic, this time with a fractured wrist. It was obvious that the abuse was escalating. Alderman Prescott arrived and removed her from my care before I was able to properly treat her wrist. And what happened next? Abigail asked me to meet with her. But when she didn't show up at the designated time, I proceeded to their home, where I discovered that her husband had made arrangements to have her committed to the Andrew Mercer Reformatory for Women. And how did you respond to that? I offered to take her away, 
That reformatory is unfit for human habitation. At least she would still be alive there. Oh, Sparrows, you are a monster. Silence. Any further outbursts and you will be removed. Dr. Ogden, you were caring for Abigail's fractured wrist all this time. Yes, she was in a great deal of pain. And laudanum's an extremely powerful pain reducer? Yes, uh, uh, it is. When used judiciously, it's, it's... Would you call ten times the recommended dosage judicious? Well, of course not, but I, I didn't give her that dosage. Are you sure? Yes. How can you be sure? Uh, well, I, I... You're not sure, are you? Yes, I am. Oh, are you saying you're infallible? It, <laughs> no, I, I'm... So you admit I, you're capable of making mistakes. Well, yes, It's but... possible you gave her the wrong bottle, isn't it, Dr. Ogden? In the absence of any other explanation, is it not most likely that Abigail Prescott died because you provided her with the wrong bottle of laudanum? Uh, Answer the question, Doctor. Yes, it's, it's possible. Julia Ogden knew that Abigail Prescott was due to be admitted to the Andrew Mercer Reformatory for Women, a place where she would have been cared for, where she would have been safe. Instead, she trusted this charlatan with disastrous consequences. Dr. <clears throat> Julia Ogden is solely responsible in the death of Abigail Prescott, and her misguided arrogance would surely benefit from the correction a lengthy stint in prison would provide. Thank you. The jury will now be dismissed to deliberate. I'll expect your decision by tomorrow. There has to be something we've missed. We've scoured every file, questioned every witness to the point of near harassment. What's our next move? There is no next move. We've explored every possible argument for Julia's innocence. It's in the hands of the jury now. What verdict do you predict? It's unwise to speculate. Be unwise, please. Just between us. Have a drink, detective. There's a page missing. What? In Inspector McRae's report. Seven, nine, ten. No eight. A page is missing. Yes. Do you remember what it said? Well, what's missing is my interview with the hotel clerk. She said they checked in at 6 p.m., uh, paid in cash. And that they didn't leave the hotel until doctor departed the next morning. The last time she saw Mrs. Prescott is when she made a telephone call in the middle of the night. She made a telephone call? Yes. Is that important? Yes. It means someone else may have known her whereabouts. A new disclosure after the jury has gone to deliberation. This is highly irregular. Furthermore, the fact that Abigail Prescott made a phone call seems irrelevant. Don't you see? Someone removed a page from Inspector McRae's report precisely because the telephone call is relevant. Detective Murdoch, you are overstepping your bounds. Respectfully, Your Honor, Detective Murdoch has a point. My report contains several pages, and one was missing when it was turned over to the defense. It's rather suspicious. Your Honor, surely you can understand the detective's desire to see justice served. If Abigail Prescott made a phone call in the middle of the night, whoever she called could have tracked her down and administered the fatal dose while Dr. Ogden was away. Nonsense. If Mrs. Prescott was secretly making phone calls in the dead of night, she was likely calling for help to be released from the clutches of Dr. Ogden. Oh, please, the missing page! This is your second warning, detective. Your Honor, I do submit that the missing page is worthy of further scrutiny. I have no knowledge of this missing page, and my colleagues' insinuations are verging on slander. Let's not resort to histrionics. 
At any rate, I remain unconvinced that this alleged phone call has any bearing on the case. We'll proceed with the jury's verdict. What if they find me guilty? They won't. They might. Keep your mind on the future. All of those beautiful eventualities. No, such as? Susanna's first words. <laughs> Her first steps with those plump little legs. I can picture her first bicycle ride. We'll share all of those moments together. You are innocent, Julia. And I won't rest until the world knows it. Yeah. The jury is ready with the verdict. Thank you. Julie Ogden, please stand. The jury has found you guilty of manslaughter in the death of Abigail Prescott. No! You are hereby sentenced to three years in prison. Three years? This is ridiculous! We demand a new trial. What about the telephone call? If you just allow me to investigate... Detective Murdoch, sit down. Bailiff, take Mrs. Murdoch away. Her name is Dr. Julia Ogden. 